on this year, um, different roles for partner A and B, but this was pretty unstructured, just kind of happened to be sitting with a partner mm -hmm. and the way they chose to interact um, was different across different groups. I think you can hear this kid Thomas in the background, like, I'm really curious about that interaction myself because I'm like, is that helpful to the girl he's talking to? Or is that girl kind of like, this is too much? <laughs> like, um, Yeah, there's like a handful of different interactions and some kids are talking more than Bill and Karen. Bill and Karen seemed really content to like, just kind of look over every once in a while. And then at minute five, I was like, oh, they're talking, <laughs> you know? And, and that felt real, so I was glad that, like, I just captured what they were doing. <laughs> I also think they might be dating, but it's not super official. No. I had a worry about that, too, because of the thumb wrestling. <laughs> mm -hmm. There was a moment when Karen turned around and talked to somebody behind her. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting, like, just to see this cross, this mm -hmm. cross the room interaction. I, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall exactly what they said, but it was interesting to see, like, how they informed each other maybe through the yeah. communicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm happy you noticed it. And I'm like, in a sense, like proud of it because I think kids know enough of the kids in the room that they can just like turn to somebody on their left or their right or behind. And I think they were sharing what they estimated are to be and kind of comparing with each other, maybe a little more context at the end of this, they put their R estimates in a Google form. And then we got to see like, the range of mm. estimates mm. and generally agreed that like the center of all of our estimates made sense and talked about like the ones on the fringes like would we go so far as to say 0.6 for this one it's looking pretty strong and then kids would be like okay okay I'll go closer to 0.8 you know <laughs> so Very cool. that's been a really frustrating conversation in the past too about like how to help them navigate that it's it's not um, it is a skill to be able to just make an estimate and yeah. not be a hundred percent sure about it. And, yeah. and like tomorrow we're going to put in some data and the calculator can tell us exactly what R is, but today or that day it was getting a sense of what R is and making an estimate. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say it, it's very evident from watching this video that they have a lot of practice with just kind of correcting each other and like making a mistake and then having someone kind of mm -hmm. call out your mistake isn't a big deal. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, well, let's talk about it. Like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. well, we're, we're both wrong or you're right. And, you know, um, so I thought that was cool. Good job. Yeah. Were there moments that you saw that like really highlighted that for you? Um, that, that time that Bill and Karen start talking, I think Karen's like, wait, why did you get this? And he's just like, yeah, like, well, I'm just, you know, like it wasn't, uh -huh. it didn't really seem like he got super defensive or anything. He just, they just kind of talked it through and then they went back to their work, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. which is good, you know, positive culture in the classroom. Yeah. Um, Tori, any highlight strengths and highlights you want to name? Well, I, do you mind if I ask a question? <laughs> um, no, no question. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just wondering, like, Rachel, I was wondering, like, how you would describe kind of, like, diverse learning in your classroom? Like, um, are there certain kinds of ways of thinking that you're noticing across the different, you have 28 kids, like, how, and then, like, do you have any kids on IEPs or even not on IEPs, just, they just clearly think differently than other kids, and how do you address that? I'm just thinking, yeah. Um, I think I'm just, it's part of why I'm getting feedback from the kids because I'm trying to solicit like when something's working, like kind of what percentage of the class is that method working for. Um, at the same time, this is a group of students where like half of them have already taken BC calculus and there's a certain kind of expectation around um like what math class looks like. And I feel like the, like that's a group of kids who have gotten good at this game that is math in school. Um, and then there's a group of kids who came from math three and I totally sold it to them. Like I went around last year, like you can sign up for AP stats after math three, you have the skills, you have the knowledge. Um, so 
I don't know how to answer your question exactly, but it's bringing me back to the kid who was frustrated with me yesterday, but was able to tell me that like what I'm doing isn't working. And it's just like, right now he's in a class where like I'm balancing different ways of learning. And I think it's super throwing him off, but I see his reaction is like kind of an anomaly. <laughs> Most of the other mm-hmm. kids on their feedback are like, um, sharing things they appreciate, sharing things that they do in other classes that they like, and they hope what we can do in our class and don't feel as charged. And (laughs) so I don't know if I'm answering the question about diverse learning, but just like trying to change up methods of like communicating the way that we shared our answers through a Google form. And that's just us trying to make sense of what our values work and what our values make sense together. Um, yeah not a lot of I don't think I have a single student with an IEP in this class maybe um in a different class period but it's a pretty well it's not as diverse like the group of learners is not as diverse as like my math 2 class but I did sort of name those two groups of like there's some kids who have been through all the AP math classes And there are some students who haven't taken math analysis or AP calc and they came to stats instead. So that, that feels diverse in that way. What math they've had access to and what kinds of math classes they've had access to. Tori, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Other strengths and highlights that you all want to name? Um, I really like the activity. I think it's a correlation coefficients or that's what they're called again, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There's such a simple, but I think complex sort of concept to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. So I think it was really good that kind of their first, you know, experience with it was estimating. Yeah. Um, And then interpreting because the interpretation piece is always the hardest. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so I thought it was kind of a really cool like discovery lesson for that yeah I appreciated the way that you gave them choice and how they wanted to read the notes and that you weren't talking to them I thought that was a really cool balance of like I am preparing you for like college style ways that directors communicate their information but doing it in a way that gave them some choice about like how they wanted to best make sense of that information Mm-hmm. Um, instead of like, I'm going to make the assumption that you all just want to hear me talk. Yeah. Um, and thank you. And sorry, if I can just jump in. Sometimes I feel like yeah. I'm on a bit of a PR campaign to let them know why I'm not sitting in front of them, just talking at them. Mm-hmm. It's like they're expecting it. A group of kids, not a hundred percent of them by any means. Um, but just always communicating my, my intention around like why we're reading this or making it clear, like, these are like, I'll put the word lecture and it makes them feel better. I'm like, these are the lecture notes. Like <laughs> even if, even if we're not sitting and like copying from the board, this is the lecture information that I want you to have, yeah. you know? I love how that gives them the skill of like, you will be able to look at lecture notes in future classes and make sense of it yourself. Even if you didn't get what was going on in the lecture or yeah. you missed class or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, Rachel, I want to move us on to having you name a question that you want us to take up discussion around. Okay. How do y'all interpret the amount of quiet that is happening between mm. Bill and Karen? Like, I don't know, like, what are you wondering about when we watch them just kind of be quiet for like, I want to say it's like four or five minutes. Yeah. And I'm definitely toying with the idea of like, okay, I'm going to cut this out. Like, where am I going to cut the video? And then I was like, no, like, this is what's happening between Bill and Karen and how you think that connects to productive struggle. Um, mm. That, like, there might be some amount of quiet. Just, like, what you what you guys thought of that. If you thought, um, I don't know. Well, let's start. Well, um, are these two kids who've taken other AP mm-hmm. math courses? Okay, so um, that that was my thought when you told me about the kind of two sets of kids. Mm-hmm. I get a sense that students who historically do well in math classes 
are very independent and prefer 